we've been uh, following closely your work on the committee for drafting the Lokpal bill and uh, also with concern the fact that there seem to be major differences between the civil society proposals for the bill and the government's representative's proposal for the bill. So now it's being reported that the government is going to bring out its own version of the Lokpal bill and the civil society representatives can present their version. What are the major areas of difference that you have encountered in working with the government's representatives for the Lokpal bill? See, uh, the government's vision <coughs> of the Lokpal is completely different from our vision. While we envision the Lokpal as a comprehensive anti-corruption machinery which will be independent of the government and empowered to investigate corruption at all levels of all public servants, judiciary, bureaucracy, uh, ministers, members of legislature, etc. The government envisions it as a small institution, essentially of just 11 members, with a small investigative machinery under it, which will look into only corruption in high places as they call it, and even there, not look at corruption involving the Prime Minister, members of Parliament who, who take cash for votes, etc., or cash for questions, or even members of the higher judiciary. Therefore, their vision of the Lokpal is a very, very limited vision, while we view it as a comprehensive anti-corruption machinery which is independent of the government, empowered to investigate and prosecute all public servants for corruption, and accountable in multiple ways to ensure that it remains free from corruption itself. So now this is an example of people wanting to assert their right to initiate a legislation, the initiative that you have, that you are at this time seeing as championing. It's an example of people wanting to assert their right to legislate. Now, According to the existing system, what uh, we are told is that only the legislature has the right to frame legislation. So what is your view on this? I mean, is it time that people should have the right to legislate and how do you see this as a step in that direction? See, uh, it is true that in the present system, the legislation must be passed by parliament and therefore ultimately parliament will legislate. The question, however, is whether Parliament will legislate without ascertaining the wishes or the views of the people or whether they will legislate after ascertaining them and in accordance with the wishes and the views of the people. We have been saying that there is a very great public demand, very widespread public opinion in favour of a comprehensive, empowered, anti-corruption machinery to be made independent of the government, which can deal with corruption at all levels. And therefore, the parliament, while legislating on this, should take the views and wishes of the people into consideration. If they have any doubt about what the wishes and the views of the majority of the people in the country are, they can have a referendum for this purpose in which all the contentious issues can be put to vote of the people, whether the Prime Minister should be included or not within the jurisdiction of the Lokpal, whether the higher judiciary should be included or not, whether MPs uh, taking cash for votes should be included, whether the lower bureaucracy should be included or not. All these issues can be set out and put to vote and the views of the people. This will be a unique experiment for ascertaining the wishes of the people while uh, passing a legislation. After all, democracy is ruled by the people. Ideally, all executive decisions 
as well as policy decisions and legislation should be framed according to the wishes of the people. We have adopted a very imperfect form of representative democracy because at that time it was not possible to ascertain the views of the people on a whole range of issues again and again. But today technology has made it possible. You can have internet kiosks in every village through which people can vote on whole range of issues, even vote every day if called upon to do so on one issue or another. Therefore, why should that not be done? Experience with these recent bills is though the government says, like food security bill and R&R, land acquisition bills and so on, though it puts out the draft for discussion and so-called takes uh, feedback from uh, all the organizations. Finally, when it comes to legislating, they just do what they want. They only what is convenient to them. So in that way, this uh, forcing the government to come and have an open discussion so that all the things are recorded openly, people are aware of the entire process of what is going on. And if necessary, like you are saying, having a referendum is, a, I think, a very something which uh, stands out from the other uh, efforts so far. You see, <clears throat> one of the issues has been whether the proceedings of the drafting committee should be made public or not, whether it should be televised or not. We have been saying that they should be so that people know as to what is being discussed, what are the reasons being given by the government, by members of civil society for or against various issues. After all, the Right to Information Act itself demands that, says the basis is that uh, all public servants are representatives of the people and the people who are the real masters have a right to know what they are doing. This very issue of whether deliberations within the government should be made known to the people or not was uh, discussed during the drafting of the Right to Information Act when the question was whether minutes, whether uh, correspondence, uh, notings should be made public or not. And it was decided that they should be. And this whole argument that, well, if they are made public, people will not be able to say things candidly, that was also discussed and that was rejected. Uh, and therefore, it would be much better if uh, these kind of things are televised. After all, parliament discussions are televised. What is the difficulty in televising the deliberations of these kind of